What a way to get things underway. It's the first race for 2024 for the Wheeland Master MX5 Cup, and it's live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to 2024. It's time to go racing. Beautiful afternoon at the Daytona International Speedway. And we kick off IMSA's competitive season in the week of the 62nd Rolex 24 hours with one of our favorites. Just about a couple of miles off the beach at Daytona is where this brilliant circuit has been carved out. The Lake Lloyds, which has seen, uh, seen, seen uh, speedboat racing in the past, was uh, dug out to build up the earth banks either end of the speedway. But we're on the infield circuit at three and a half miles uh, with the brilliant drop down into turn one. It's quite a nuanced infield, actually. Plenty going on there. But of course, with these Will and Mazda MX-5 Cup cars, it's all about the draft. And since Mazda came back with the MX-5 into the paddock uh, of IMSA, this has been a must-see event. And don't believe me about that. Ask any of the pro drivers in the rest of the series, because right now they're in a break. They've all headed off to hospitality. At Apex, they've got the huge screens up on the inside of the hospitality area, and people are settling down with their afternoon stroke evening meal before they go out for nighttime practice, because this is going to be excitement with a capital, well, excitement. Alongside me, as ever, uh, one of our RSL regulars, normally pounding the pit lane, but also equally at home in our global broadcast centre. Good afternoon to Shay Adam. Good afternoon, John. Only six miles walk so far today, so still a little bit more to go. But uh, we've got the entire field rolling out of the pit lane now. Hopefully none of them making their way back in, being led out by the Whalen Mazda MX-5 Cup safety car. And here's the Mazda grid for round one. For 2024, Connor Zilich kept a poor position for his new team. BSI Racing with Celine Roland for also BSI, really, Roland Racing. So they have locked out the front row from Aaron Johnson and Jared Thomas for JTR. Then Spark Performances, Noah Harmon is the first of the rookies. Uh, he's alongside Rick Ware Racing's Preston Pardus. Western Workman, another one of our rookies, and the scholarship winner for BSI is in seventh place on the inside of row four. Heather Hadley has her best ever qualifying for BSI in eighth. Making up the top ten, another rookie, Nathan Nicholson for JTR and Rick Ware Racing's Cody Ware. Head back through the field. Nate Cicero is on the inside of row number six for McCumbie McInerney Racing. His teammate from that awning, Gresham Wagner, is alongside him in the number five. BSI's Jonathan Nodoff is in P13, with Tyler Gonzalez for Sato Motorsport Group in 14th position. On row eight, Julian De Costa is another one of the seven rookies we have this year for BSI. Then Jeremy Fletcher for McCumbie McAleer Racing. Uh, row number nine is an all JTR affair with Peter Atwater on the inside. Tyler is on position number 19 with Alex Pachura in the 33 Spark Performance Master for company. Jean Jodouin, a little further down than he would have liked for McCombie Magalia Racing, has JTR Motorsport Engineering driver James Hayosh on his outside. Uh, the sixth of seven rookies, Sally Mott, who has just gained time all week for Spark Performance, the uh, recipient of the female scholarship prize at the shootout last year. She is in... Uh, position number 23, and alongside her on the outside the 12th floor, row, BSI Racing's Christian Hodnerland. Uh, Rick, uh, Nick Schaefer is the final of our, no, sorry, the uh, penultimate of our rookies for JTR. Park it along alongside him. Then Cody Powell is the last of our rookies for JTR. He's in position 28 with Farhan Siddiqui alongside him, with Grant West at the back of the grid 29 cars did grant actually get his car out no grant west is a scratch for the weekend okay he had problems earlier on beautiful weather 75 fahrenheit in the air that's 27 celsius track temperature about 35 uh, on the ground that's 95 fahrenheit wee bit of overcast 
but it's looking great and the field looks fantastic lots of new uh, liveries to get used to as the whaling mazda mx5 safety car which looks fantastic please i need to have it a go does. in that uh, we are starting a new era and a new year of racing the green flags in the air 28 cars come to the line and it is the number 72 of Connor Zilic for BSI Racing who crosses the line first just about a nose ahead as they head down into the first corner from the outside Celine Rolland in that new colour scheme the light blue yellow and white is going to get shuffled to the outside down the inside the darker colour car Aaron Johnson is in a black car we've been used to seeing him in the sole red metallic cars in the past everyone has Negotiate the first couple of corners. That's a nice dive down the inside by Jared Thomas, a double champion. And going for the three-peat this year, he has held on to his colours with the yellow roll bar. So at least we know where we are with that one, Shay. Nice, clean start. <laughs> yeah, it was a good start. And for both of our front rows, we had a little bit of uh, chaos going on because team cars were lined up side by side instead of line astern. Now they've righted themselves. And Aaron Johnson once again in that dark blue turn two. Mazda slotting back into fourth just behind Jared Thomas. They're going to start working together immediately. Noah Harmon in the gray Mazda. The number 99 car just turning into turn number six now got a little bit of a hello and welcome to the series and there he is out on the uh, far side of the circuit and he's been pushed out he was right up the sharp end of the field and now he's going to be down in the teens maybe the 20th position as he got a couple of little nudges one coming out of turn five and one going through turn six down to the Lamont chicane for the first time and the leading three trying to pull away. There was just Ooh. a little side by side, and that was Alex Bashura who was. hit the grass in the green number 33. So a little bit of a schmozzle in the middle of the field. It looks like Gresham Wagner checked up and uh a Ninziata, uh, sorry, not a Ninziata, Jonathan Neudorf got into the side of him and then resulted in nerfing Alex Bashur off the track. So that was an unintentional contact. Now the race director has been very clear about extensive and extended bump drafting on the banking it's all right down the straights but it's been outlawed here for a few years what you will see here is how difficult it is to break away you saw the 72 the red and white car of Connor Zilic had a little bit of a lead but as he comes through the trioval and down into turn one it's the top five then Jared Thomas Noah Harmon is back in there so he's done a pretty good job so that wasn't the 99 that got pushed out that that time around was it no that's Pardus that's in there so it was the number 99 that was uh, pushed away correct Noah Harmon now running around in the last place so yep that's a, a good thing it happened on lap one he's got a lot of time to work his way back to Bad the point. front this also means that Connor Zilich with the 10 bonus points for uh, getting the pole position has also led a lap which right now is the most lap so he's got a 20 point lead in the championship over everybody else Noah Harmon into the pits by the way yeah he might have some damage well has he been called Car 33, an unknown under review. That would be Jonathan Neudorf, yeah. the 55, as Sally Mott went for a bit of a wild ride. Yeah, that was coming out of turn one last time around. You will try and hear, you will hear Shea and I rather trying to keep our calm at the moment, despite everything that's going on, because undoubtedly it will only get more exciting as we go through. Can't peak too soon. No, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to put a heart rate monitor on me for one of these. Still got the 72 red and white car, BSI Racing, Connor Zilic. Uh, what a prospect that driver is, won the most races last year. Yep. Did not win the championship because he didn't contest all of the championship, went away and did some trans -arm. Testament, I think, to this championship and how it's become a destination. He's back this year to do some more racing. Still got over $1.2 million up for grabs this year, spread between a big end of season prize pot, which will see the winner, the overall winner take $250,000 and the introduction, what last season of the uh, prize pot per race. Correct, six grand for winning a race, but it pays all the way down to 10th. And now they're, well, getting a bit adventurous. And, ah, too, uh, too wide. Is that Preston Pardis? Yes, He's it is. He's now starting to uh, flex his muscles and trying to go 52. around the outside of Preston. Jared Thomas. White and blue car, the 52, with Jacob written on the side. And that's going to leave Jared Thomas in a 
Sticky situation as he comes through the chicane and down towards the east end of the infield. That's the international horseshoe, so-called, because it has the flags of nations of drivers who are competing in the Rolex 24. This weekend, 60 second running of that race. Oh, somebody's going to have to go wide. That's the other car with the yellow roof bar. I think that's Tyler Gonzalez. I think that is Tyler Gonzalez. Group. Yeah. Leading to get away. So you think, all right, fine, that's it. Well done. It'll be either Zilich <laughs> or Roland. Uh, yeah, not for long. It's already closed back up again. Celine Roland in that new colour scheme. We're going to have to get used to that one. Well, hopefully we have to get used to it. Hopefully Celine is back for more than just this weekend. But as it is now, Daytona is his focus because he's got a real job waiting for him Monday. Commercial pilot's license finally came through and oh, he got a it? call up from a big airline. Do we know which one? Not saying. Okay. Well, I want to know. Is it one I'm likely to, sl to fly on? Not saying. Okay. You have to ask him. Right. Yeah, it's okay. his big news to break. All right, okay, that's fine. Oh, three car train now is Connor Six Zilich, Celine train. Roland, uh, Jared Thomas. <laughs> yes, very well played. Preston Pardis. Who's behind them? Uh, one of the MMR cars. That would be Nate Cicero, Nate Cicero and Jeremy Fletcher. So we have two MMR cars working together with two JTR cars with two BSI cars. Um, I don't know how Shea manages to sit down for these races because I never can. Pacing from foot to foot here in the Global Broadcast Centre. Um, we should mention the additional points. Pole position brings points, well, uh, leading the most laps and the fastest lap of the race. And that's what I was going to bring up because I, I did change my notebook a little bit this year, John. More colors is always a good thing. Um, but last year it was Connor Zilich who got the most bonus points. So even though he missed out four races on the year, he got a lot of bonus points. And it's never too early to start thinking championship and points because championship pays real cash money. And going across the line this time, it's Justin De Costa who takes the fastest lap. 209.146. Gresham Wagner had had it before. Oh no. This is starting to get interesting. We're getting all NASCAR. Who's gone off there? Behind the tire wall on the left hand side. Uh, rejoining, I think it's Heather Hadley. She's been off there. No, it's not Heather. Nope. It's the 54 car. That's Heather. Oh, it is Heather. Let's see the what BSI happened. racing car. Yes, apologies. They were all going through rather oh, well. Oh, she got a big tank slapper. That well, was she'd, a great she'd had a side swipe earlier on. Has she got damage on that left front? Oh, she'll be very disappointed with that. She qualified in eighth. That's comfortably her best qualifying position. She's finished inside the top ten before, but she's not qualified there. So we're getting old NASCAR now. <laughs> uh, two wide and ten deep. Coming out back onto the high banks. And we've had a change at the front of the train. Jeremy Fletcher leads. Fletcher goes through with Celine Roland for the moment in second. He, you can see the brake lights flashing. They are not trying to brake check the guys behind them, making sure that the brake pads on the racing brakes are seated on the disc, on the rotor, because coming up at the end of this run, they've got a big stop into the Le Mans chicane. And there's the push from the 72 of Conor oh. Zilic. And one, two, three and a half. Are we going to make it four wide? Yes, we are. Into the Le Mans chicane. Fletcher got strung out to dry going down the back straight. And the big push that was coming up for his teammate. And Nate Cicero did not carry over to him. Now he's behind Aaron Johnson. Oh, my goodness. I've just seen the best race control message ever. Incident involving car 33 and multiple. Nice, reviewed. nice. Reviewed. No further action. Yep, I, I would fully agree with that decision, race control. Well done. Yeah, indeed. It's very good. So the leading group now is round about a, well, a dozen or 14 cars. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 12 cars, then a gap back to another couple, which is uh, then the rest of the field are all together pretty much. Yeah, but that second group, John, oh my goodness, they're going three wide into turn one. Uh, the second group is still working together very well, so there's not a lot of chaos. It's on the track, there is chaos. Nate Cicero is well off. Damage. He's in the infield. Is there damage? I can't see the right side of the car, but he has pulled off onto the grass. Now, if he can get to a safe space, we can stay green. He's doing a hard right turn and coming to a stop. Look, what happened to Nate? Looked like he got a, just a little tap. But I think it looked like there was suspension damage on that car. Oh, no. Has, it, has the engine cut out? Nope. No, he's moving once again in the infield. 
That was a very strange moment, though, for Nate Cicero, last year's Rookie of the Year winner, which also came with an $80,000 check. I, I thought when he was bouncing across the grass, it, the suspension didn't look happy, but the MMR, the McCombie McAleer Racing number 83 car, is running. I, I wonder if he got a bump and it knocked the uh, engine kill switch or something like that, and he's reset it. Maybe it knocked it out of gear. Yeah, could have. And he's uh, heading back onto the circuit. We've had Connor Zilich with two laps led. This will be Celine Rowland's second lap led. So we now have a little bit of discrepancy. Ed and Celine Roland leads. Now we've still got another 35 minutes of this is through for the first time into the lead goes Gresham Wagner. Who's not, not in the lead, but he's starting to make a move, John. Yeah. And Gresham Wagner is a wily character. He knows how to win at Daytona. He knows how to finish on the podium. I'm keeping my eyes on that number five. Well, he's fighting his way back through. It's still DeCosta with the fastest lap, 209-146. We'll see them across the line and into the next lap as the leading group come through. And it's Jared Thomas, double champion. We'd never had a repeat champion until last year, and Jared managed to double it up. 210.086, his fastest lap of the race. And welcome uh, to IMSA, to the Mazda MX-5 Cup, to the CEO of Whelan, Jeff Marsh. How about this for a bit of spectacle? Oh, what a race so far. Very exciting to watch. Tell me a little bit about wh why Whelan felt the need um, to get involved with Mazda MX-5 Cup racing. Sure. So we, we've, we've been involved in various ways in racing for almost 30 years now. And uh, last year I was at this race uh, taking in really what was going on with these awesome drivers and the excitement level of the series. Um, really started the conversation with Mazda early on in, in the season last year and uh, partnering up with Jonathan from Mazda and, and really learning more about the program and what it's all about. It's just been a natural fit for us to come here. Well, it's no stranger to supporting racing. Um, your products are used in racing uh, and in safety vehicles all around the world as well as first responder vehicles. Obviously, the Wheel and Engineering Cadillac we know very well indeed. That's at a very high level. This is at a very high entertainment level, but important to support this level of racing? Absolutely. This is the grassroots where a lot of the drivers come up through the series. And um, we're also involved in the Wheel and Modified series. I've uh, been doing that for a lot of years, the Wheel and Euro series. So we're no stranger to being a tour sponsor. And um, a after seeing this series last year run, it, it was just um, absolutely what we wanted to get involved with. And we've got even more flashing lights on the Whelan safety car, yeah. which is fantastic. Absolutely. I mean, the racetrack is a showcase of our products. We, we totally, if you, if you look at the pace car, you look at the wrecker trucks, fire trucks, um, all of those are just a showcase of what we do at Whelan. There's a little bit of chaos going on on the track, but before we get back to the track action, Whelan is such a fundamentally American brand. So for you guys looking at this series and the history of the champions, we have to go all the way back to 2012, and it was Stephen McAleer since the last time there was a non-American champion. Do you guys view that as, as an added bonus that you're helping get so much attention on these up-and-comers? For, for sure. I mean, our, our roots are, are primarily here in the U.S. I mean, we manufacture all of our products um, between our two factories in Connecticut um, and New Hampshire. And we're expanding globally, but yes, we do like that presence of the um, all the domestic drivers here for sure. But I mean, if you look at it in the DPI series, I mean, we, we certainly go abroad. Um, we did Le Mans last year with that car, with the, the, the wheel and Cadillac 30. It was actually the 311 car That's right. Le Mans last year. Um, but that was an exciting program to be a part of. And if you think that you can't keep reinventing yourself with safety lamps, then think again, Whelan have been at the forefront of technology. One of the coolest things that I've ever seen is how your first responder lights, and I know they use them on the uh, police cars over here, how um, when they get in proximity with each other, they're Bluetooth linked, and they all flash, um, instead of randomly, they flash together. That is one of the coolest demonstrations I've ever seen. Absolutely, that, that synchronization actually works um, off of the satellites overhead. 
So oh. with the GPS signal, we can actually synchronize our clocks to that, and we can flash on the East Coast the exact same flash on the West Coast. It doesn't oh, matter how close you are. That's even cleverer than I thought. <laughs> that is brilliant. I, absolutely. I, I absolutely need some of your lightning for my BMW motor motorcycle. I'll be talking to you, Jeff, later on. Thank you for supporting the Wheeland Master <laughs> MX-5 cup and hopefully we'll see you throughout the season absolutely i'll be to some other races looking forward to it looking forward to it too that uh, is brilliant stuff jeff marsh ceo of Wheeland, and look at the racing we've still got a half an hour left of this <laughs> Do so we? lovely to speak to our new uh, presenting sponsor and still plenty of action one or two fewer bits of bodywork on the cars but how did we not have a huge accident at that point we didn't we didn't have to break in and it's still exactly where we were with Connor Zilic before we start to talk to Jack it's Connor Zilic at the front of the field from Celine Roland then it's Western Workman who's come up that's the dark purple car and he has been there or thereabouts he was second quickest in both of the free practice sessions he didn't get a good qualifying session he's raced his way up to third here ahead of champion former champion gresham wagner and tyler gonzalez is in there as well well and he's joined in two of his team cars because western workman with bsi racing so first second and third all represented by shay's team not this shay the other shay uh, a lot of people still ask her how she does the commentary and, and run races, a race team. yeah um so yeah different shays even though we spell it the same but weston the scholarship shootout winner from this season but now we've got bodywork hanging off of not only celine roland's car he's got the right rear portion of the bumper hanging off gresham wagner has the left rear portion of the bumper hanging oh. off and there was a huge moment for both Gresham and Jeremy Fletcher. So two of the MMR cars that are still out and running, Nate Cicero, I believe, stopped on the track again and then got moving again. But for MMR, this is a, yeah. a breathtaking race. Uh, Nate has made the pit lane. Good. So the, the, the MMR car uh, has a bit of a cough and a splutter, but it's got in. I'm, I suspect, and I'm looking to my left to race control because we're right next door. Them. They'll be taking a very close look at that number. 87 Nate Cicero because the rear bumper cover. Celine Roland. Uh, excuse me, Celine Roland's car. That rear bumper cover is ripping away with the aero. It will not be helping his aerodynamic efficiency. The worry is that that comes off and causes problems for following traffic. Uh, nicely, though, Ooh. the. Western Workman uh, car is trying to push it back on for him. Which yeah, is, yeah, but oh, Western... and he gets a hit from behind from the number five of Gresham Wagner. Who also has a bumper coming loose on the rear right. So this, he's... this is bump drafting. This, this is, is bump, bump drafting. drafting. In there as well, Jeremy Fletcher. Tyler Gonzalez dropped back a little bit. Now back up in the sixth position. Gonzalez with the white car with the green stripe and the, again, the coloured interior and roll over hoop very wide entry into turn one there from gresham wagner third position across the line he might have lost a couple of positions here we've still got the better part of 10 cars and gresham just got on the wrong side of western workman that would have woken weston up if he was uh, feeling at all comfortable western workman was scored as the leader across the line there sure how <laughs> I'm like, well, hey, it's Mazda. <laughs> oh Wheel and Mazda MX-5 racing. Lots of green colours. Means people are doing their fastest lap. The fastest lap of the race, Julian De Costa, in 11th for BSI. He is now. Well, that's Weston Workman's first lap led of this series and this championship for 2024. Guarantee it will not be his last. 11 cars in the leading group three wide onto the banking this does not board well for the leaders that is not efficient which line is picked it's the bottom line and gresham wagner will be pushed through by the 57 of tyler gonzalez right in behind him the number 22 jeremy fletcher in the dark blue in fact it's black on the sides isn't it with a little bit of blue and then the young man western workman the rookie he is the top rookie at the moment and uh, Nathan Nicholson is just at the back of that group. And Weston's bumper is now starting to flap on the right rear. So these guys are having a lot of heavy contact that's knocking their bumpers loose at very early stages in the race. But now Tyler Gonzalez is trying to push uh, the Gresham Wagner bumper back on. Very generous. Very, very kind. No touching around the high banks of the oval coming through. Speedway three and four right now. 
Here comes the number 22, going to get a little bit of help. Jeremy on the high side, and through he comes, Jeremy Fletcher with Western Workman right on his bumper, pushes him through. If that had been the checkered flag, Jeremy would have taken that one. Drops down in front of Gresham Wagner. Here comes the rest of the field. Zilic, Rolan, Pardus, Aaron Johnson is there as well. De Costa moving up a position to 10th. I'm, I'm, I'm deliberately going to pause for a second here because otherwise I again picked too early. Plenty of action still to come in the last 25 minutes of this race. This battle at the front is magnificent, but what I am also very pleased about is that our second and third groups are having fantastic battling amongst themselves, too. Well, there were just two cars uh, that were fighting amongst themselves, uh, and uh, that was a little bit further down, Jean Chetouin, Woody Hyman, but now Jonathan Neudorf and Cody Ware and Heather Hadley uh, recovering with Peter Atwater, Sally Mott up to 18th position last time across the line. And that's, there was a couple of cars in no man's land there, but that's all started to come together again. Fletcher now to the front from Wagner, from Zilic, from Workman, from Gonzalez, goes on the high side. He's going to lose that position to Celine Roland, drops back in behind him. Two pairs of two coming off turn two. Celine Roland's livery is the best for us in the booth to be oh, able to spot him anywhere. Spot him on the, the far side of the circuit without my binoculars. <sighs> oh, a big push as Celine is now losing two positions. Tyler Gonzalez moving ahead, as is Preston Pardis. So Lamont again. Still Jeremy Fletcher leading the way, though. This young man has changed his entire approach in the offseason. He went into the preseason test at Sebring and led at the top of the charts for the first time in his career. Jeremy Fletcher in 2024 is a different driver than Jeremy Fletcher 2023. I'm very impressed with our young rookie, Western Workman. He was scored second across the line last time around. Got strung out to dry there. Yeah, really li lined out, didn't he? Here comes the number 52 on the outside. That's a long way back to come for Preston Pardis, but he's almost made that work, you know, three wide ahead of him. He'll drop in behind Tyler Gonzalez here. He's got Celine Roland on his inside. It'll be two abreast, almost three abreast, going down into the hairpin. The first of the two horseshoes. Could be Magalia racing. Mate Jeremy Fletcher behind for a moment, but now Zilich tries to go around the outside of the 72 with the red front, the classic Mazda sponsored car. Tyler Gonzalez in the white and green car in fourth position for the moment, then the blue and yellow. Just past halfway in this race. Just past halfway. Cross flags, yes. Yes, cross flags. I just, I don't want to jinx anything, but the level of respect we have seen from the competitors thus far, very impressive. Sorry. Stand by Sorry. safety car. <laughs> I do love the new Mazda Ah, it looks car. fantastic. Really good. Wagner still trying to just break the toe, but he's not going to do that. So this is about trying to whittle down this group it's not happening. No one's really falling off the back. De Costa's still there in 10th position as they went across the line last time around. In fact, if anything, we're going to get another car coming across, I think, here, because we've got 12 in the leading group at the moment. So Woody Hyman and then Jean Chaudouin is not that far behind. We could have a 13-car scrap. Still more than 20 minutes to go. This is classic Whelan IMSA Master MX5 Cup Racing on the high side this time. And Celine Roland pushes through the Connor Zilic number 72. The two BSI cars working yeah. together once again. This is what happens at the front of the field when team cars get together and the top three cars are all from the top, well, the top team as it has been in the past. In that group, we've got a couple of BSI cars a couple of McCombie McAlee at racing cars. Um, we've got the JTR cars, Nathan Nicholson and uh, Aaron Johnson. So there's three of them in that group. And Jared. With Jared a little bit further up. 
So there, there are teammates there. De Costa actually makes it three PSI cars in there. Four if you count Celine Roland. So there are teammates there. They are team. Oh, hang on, Celine Roland's rear bodywork almost about to come off here. I can Full see parachute the parachute mode. Yeah, I can see the bar underneath it. Oh, right. That's a big piece. I know it's only lightweight, but that's a big piece to come off there. And these are up in cockpit cars. Yes, absolutely. He might get the black and orange flag here. And that's going to be a tough call for race control because he's, he's racing for the win here, no doubt. But safety has to be the first concern. JTR, Jared Thomas, the 96 with the yellow uh, uh, roll hoop on the sole red crystal car. And then Tyler Gonzalez with the white and green car with the coloured hoop. Three cars at the front. And again, how about this? Connor Zilic with Western Workman. Connor Zilic has been in this championship. He took more wins than anybody else, and he's being hassled by a rookie for the lead. What happened to rookies knowing their place for the first year in the season? You know what happened to that? Connor Zilic. Well, he, to that. he brought the mold of that. That's, exactly. that's very true. So you, you, you live by the rookie at the front of the field, you die by the rookie at the front of the field. Connor Zilic getting some of his own medicine. Heather Hadley going off-roading yet again. Her car is a bucking Bronco for this race, apparently. And she's uh, had the right-hand side door mirror folded in. So she's been attacking all the way through. She'd got back up to just outside the top 12. She's in 14th position, but that will have lost her a few more races. Still the rear bodywork fattling on C Celine Roland's car. To the high side, Tyler Gonzalez getting help from... Western Workman as they come around. No, it's not Western Workman, excuse me, it's the 22 of Jeremy Fletcher that pushed him with the... Then it's Fletcher. Then looks like it's Jared Thomas in there as well. No, the 24's in slipped in between them. Aaron Johnson. My goodness, mate. What a fantastic race this is. Jared Thomas just had a moment going into turn one because he was behind Celine Roland and was looking at the bumper, clearly thinking it was going to come off, moved over, and then very nearly moved into another yeah. car. Could not identify which of the other cars it was. And neither can race control because their incidents uh, reports involving unknown. cars, uh, Nick Schaefer and unknown, involving cars, Heather Hadley and unknown, that, that is the popular sentiment of right now. They've got more cameras uh, and the ability to rewind them, so... Uh, if there has been anything that is a little bit too robust, we'll see that. Uh, we are into the last uh, 17, 18 minutes, and we've still got this group of, what, close on 12, 13 cars at the front of the field. Celine Roland on the high side will be drafted by. Now, this is looking a bit dangerous. Gonzalez and Workman getting away. There's almost... Uh, oh, no, they're back. Nope. That's nope. fine. <laughs> it, it did look dangerous for a couple of seconds, but now it's all right in itself. Yeah, Gonzalez and Weston Workman clearly oh. finding a partnership as bits are actually flying yeah, off this of is... cars now. I'm not sure if that was Roland or if that was Johnson. No, that was already sitting there, Shea, from oh, the previous lap, and they ran over it. But that's the worry, having pieces of car. I, I accept that is this is not structural. This is a cover that goes over the rear bar, the rear bumper. Uh, and it's very lightweight material. These cars come in from Japan, as standard street cars to just down the road from us here at Daytona, and the Fliss brothers strip them down to their component parts. The four-cylinder, two-litre, 180 horsepower Mazda engine is put to one side, sealed with a Mazda Motorsport seal. Oh, down below the yellow line for Jared Thomas, who takes the lead, but he'll drift away from the Apex, drags the front end of the car back on the Michelin tyres. So the car stripped back, the engine put to one side, and then more than 250 specific racing parts go on. Some of them are obvious, like the roll cage, racing wheels, uh, the Sadev sequential box goes back onto the, the back of the standard Mazda engine. No messing about with the engine, so all the engines are identical. And the cars are originally supplied in white, other colours are available, but most people take them in white and then just wrap them. And the FIA safety equipment, including the cage, the fire suppression system, etc., as well as a uh, pits to car radio, racing fuel tank, racing seat, racing steering wheel, and there you have it. Very little other than the shell and the engine of the Dorna Mazda MX-5 
And what you have is one of the most cost-effective and pure ways of going racing that you could possibly have. Still 15 minutes to go in round one of the Whelan Mazda MX-5 Cup for 2024. Still Celine Roland's bumper hanging on and Connor Zilich now giving him a little bit of a shove, maybe trying to knock off his teammate's bumper, maybe trying to just push Celine back up to the leading duo because right now it is JTR leading the way and it is JT himself who is in that first position. Jared has won the second race at Daytona each of the last two years. His goal right now is to win the first. Just looking back through those cars. Oh, Ooh, big hit. That was Nathan Nicholson. I was just about to mention his name in the Whelan Belgard car. Uh, his car, I was about to say, Nathan Nicholson has a car that is pretty much the straightest there. <laughs> He's just put a big lump in the front of it as he went into the back of the number 24 of Aaron Johnson. Straightest, yes, but already with the big black mark on the nice red from yesterday's practice sessions as they go about 25 wide across start finish. And again, Aaron Johnson down below the double yellow lines trying to stay out of trouble. It is the 72 of Connor Zilic, the chrome red and white classic Mazda colours. Actually, I think that might be so red on that car with the white classic Mazda livery down the side. Then Western Workman, 22 around the outside is Jeremy Fletcher, Tyler Gonzalez, then Jared Thomas. Aaron That's your Johnson top, behind him. Yeah, top six. So seven, eight, nine, there's still 11 cars there. <laughs> we, we often see these big groups just getting slowly taken down. Weston Workman's bumper is now loose too, so this is an issue for multiple cars out there. The most flagrant one being Celine Roland, but Weston's just starting to sneak off the right-hand side. That's how Celine's began. Celine Roland looks like he's got a bow tie on the back of the car, and I don't mean a small Chevrolet sticker. It <laughs> looks like somebody's tied up the rear bumper. Or a it's handlebar a mustache. Or a handlebar mustache, very good. It's, it's hanging on, I think, with one clip right in the middle. All right, two rows, side by side, a three and a two. On the bottom, Connor Zilic, Workman, then JTR's JT. Workman goes to the high side as he tries to take the point away from Connor Zilic. Two, three, four across the track behind, diving out is Jeremy, Jeremy Fletcher. Fletcher has been absolutely on fire this weekend. I told you he's a different driver into this season. It really is a big difference for this young man. Not only has he changed teams, he's changed the way his car looks. Well, and there's a confidence I haven't seen in him before. Yeah. He's racing at the sharp end of the field with people that he's not seen in most of the races, except when he's been going out of the pit lane. Or they've been lapping him. Yeah. I mean, last year he had five DNFs. He started every single race. VIR, there was a change. He got the fast lap in That's the first right. race and got a top 10 finish. Didn't get a subsequent top 10 finish until Road Atlanta. Um, but only one finish at Watkins Glen of a six. That was his best on the year. Now Jeremy Fletcher's looking like a legitimate race winning contender. Western Workman now leads the rookie at the sharp end of the field. Only he and Nathan Nicholson in the red mic number 56 Whelan car are rookies in this top group. Uh, DaCosta's there as well. Is he not still on the back of that? I think he is. Yes, he is. Yeah. Just the very tail end of 78, it. yeah. Julian DaCosta, very much a young man who's got a big future ahead of him. So still 11 cars in this group and Western Workman you were at the shootout. He was impressive all the way through the tests there. He was impressive, and Nathan Nicholson, who finished second in the shootout, was very impressive as well. But so was Nick Schaefer. So was Noah Harmon. So was Julian DaCosta. A lot of these kids, and I say that with affection, and yes, they are still very, very young, they were super impressive, and they deserve to be here. Is this the strongest rookie year that we've seen with at least probably half, maybe more of the seven that we've got in the field this year being genuine contenders for podium or better. We've had standout yeah. rookies before. We, we, Sam Paley, I remember, Sam, Sam Paley himself. was a great, a great rookie of the year. Um, I would say yes, because there's more of them. That year there were two standouts. This year there's... 
it's going to be really interesting. Really interesting. Zilic then from Jeremy Fletcher in the lighter blue car. Then Western Workman in that dark blue BSI machine. BSI with eight cars or nine? Nine, nine cars, yeah. Oh, nine, of course, if you yeah, we count the, the Roland racing car as part of that. Tyler Gonzalez with a new colour scheme. White with green being pushed on the high side by who is that the 52 car that was pushing him around and that is Preston Pardus that lap led by Connor Zilich will cement him as the 10 bonus points for leading okay. most laps nobody else will be able to lead more than he has we're just under 10 minutes to go that is probably five possibly six laps it will depend when they cross the line who still has the fastest lap of the race? Uh, it was to uh, it was to Costa, and it still is to Costa, isn't it? Oh, that's a very impressive uh, showing for Julian. Well, that, and that's you know points huh. being uh, cash. Thank you, graphics department. As a former graphics person, I appreciate that. Barely ask, ask and you shall receive. Yes. Yeah. So so Julian DaCosta currently second in the championship with ten bonus points to Connor Zilich with the twenty bonus very points good. because we haven't awarded any points for the race yet. That's about three or four laps away. And you wouldn't put the mortgage on any of this, would you? No. It could be any one of these cars. It could be that half of these cars end up on the infield somewhere. And that is exactly what happened a moment or two ago to the Lightning McQueen car. Farhan Siddiqui going for a wild ride through the Le Mans chicane. Did he actually make it through the exit? Oh, just dropping the wheels on the inside of the curbing, and that just ripped him around back onto the grass. But thankfully, it appears no harm, no foul, and he's able to continue. And it didn't dig in and roll the Michelin tyres. Um, well, they, they do do rally tyres and rally cross tyres and off-road tyres, um, but these are supposed to be for being on the target. Too wide through the Le Mans chicane. Well, you see, that's because Western Workman doesn't know you can't go too wide through there because he's not raced here before. No, oh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that his exit from the Le Mans chicane didn't hinder his uh, ability not. to keep going either, so he'll try that again. And look at the low side behind them, the dark red with the yellow roll hoop. That's Jared Thomas being pushed by Gresham Wagner. They're going to go either side. And who? Oh, my goodness. One, two, three, four, five across the track through the tri-oval. This is starting to look like what we'll see on the last lap. We've seen this here before where there were seven or eight cars within a blink of an eye. Workman, I think, led that last lap. He did down to the inside. Gresham Wagner in the dark car to the outside, but here's Celine Roland in the middle and Jared Thomas on the inside. And all of those cars taking completely different lines through the exit of turn one. I said to watch out for Gresham Wagner. The last time I checked on him, he was back in 11th. Now he's up to second with seven and a half minutes to go. He knows it's go time. He knows how to win races here, and he's put himself in the position he wants to be in. But also, so has Jared Thomas. Yeah. And Jared Thomas right now is sitting in fourth position i'm not counting him out yet either nathan nicholson at the back of the group in the red and white wheel and number 56 and we're going to get to the end of this race and anybody who has still got a full bumper is going to be excluded <laughs> for not trying hard enough isn't it that's the way this is going to go thomas then leading a little group off on the grass for connor zilich in the red and white on the red front of number 72 car Passenger side mirror folded in for Zilich now. Yeah, that's tick that off the Mazda bingo card. He's used to having a spotter from yeah. his uh, <laughs> other activities this weekend, and so uh, Connor doesn't realize that the right side mirror still does. Going to take the pressure here from Gresham Wagner in second, Celine Renan, Renan in third in the blue and yellow car. Behind them, the dark red car is. Is it still Jared? Yes, it is. <laughs> so behind the rookie are a former series champion, a guy who's finished third in this championship four times and the first two-time defending yep. series champion. That tells you just how good Weston Workman is. And then following that, that looks like DaCosta's Julian come, DaCosta. DaCosta's come through. He's got the fastest lap of the race, the 10 points. And DaCosta, who is another rookie, three yep. rookies in this lead group. This is going to be a cracking battle for the rookie of the year. And that has a big check at the end of the year as well. It does. It's $75,000 the way of the rookie of the year. And for Julian DaCosta, Florida kid, he is shining right now in the Sunshine State. And he's pushing 
Jared Thomas, then he dives to the inside, he's pushing Jared Thomas all the way through to second place here. But Jared will have to try and cut back on the inside. The darker coloured car of Gresham Wagner, then the BSI machine, the multicoloured blue and yellow, that's Selene Roland. Then we've got the, all of a sudden, we've got the red and white car back in there, the wheeler car, and we've had an incident at the Le Mans chicane, and round has gone James Hayosh for JTR. He spun to the inside, fortunately nobody was, uh, well, he got a push there. He absolutely yeah. got a push. Who was he battling uh, with down at that part of the battle? Was that Nick Schaefer for JTR? One of his teammates, if it was. It might show up on race control as 81 and unknown, given the uh, precedent we've had so far today. Meanwhile, with just under <laughs> five minutes to go. Ooh, side-to-side -side contact for Connor Zilich and Julian Da Costa. Caught both of them off guard, but they both recovered very well at the exit of turn six now, going up onto the banking. Weston Workman leading, Jared Thomas in second, Celine Roland third, Gresham Wagner in fourth. The only one of those cars with the bumper fully intact is Jared Thomas. Yeah, he'd get excluded for that in post race tech, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top three then dragging back together using the draft. Thomas bump drafting the rookie all the way to the Le Mans chicane. Does he dive out on the inside? Does Ooh. he show his hand this time around? I don't think he does. Here comes Jeremy Fletcher down the inside. Can't get that one done. As he drops into seventh position, Gresham Wagner in fourth in the almost black car with Tyler Gonzalez behind him. And then it's the classic Mazda, the number 72 of Connor Zilic. Connor Zilic yet to make his move. There was a bit of damage on Tyler's car. I was able to see something flapping under the right front of the car. So that not being a bumper coming loose, but potentially something underneath the car working its way out of. Could be the under tray of the engine where they've been keep pushing the cars in front and just working that loose. That's aerodynamically inefficient. Celine Roland goes to the high side. Uh, this lap, and I reckon... Well, there could be one more. In fact, there could be two more. Could be two more. Yeah. Big sideways slide in the middle of the pack by Jared Thomas. Somehow he held on to it. But it's cost him a little bit of time. He'll have to defend down the inside. Here comes Tyler Gonzalez in the white and green and red car. He's got Zilich behind him, Wagner alongside him. Man, this is good racing. Destination championship, not just a stepping stone, big money. Go racing, make money, enjoy yourself, smile a lot. That's Whelan Mazda MX-5 Cup. Entertained, by the way, as well. Two laps. Yep. Race control just calling that two laps to go. Just so a big white flag this time around. Aaron John Salma still there or thereabouts, you know. He could just be waiting and biding his time. I think you could say that of a few drivers. Yeah. Tyler Gonzalez has been forcing the issue, then dropping back. You've got Connor Zilic doing that as well. Uh, in there, the 24 of Aaron Johnson in that new darker colours. Tyler. We've seen how fast uh, Julian Fletcher is as well. And Nicholson and DaCosta, the two rookies, sitting at the back of this group at the moment. But I'm not counting those guys out either with just over three and a half miles to go. No, and the, the nerve-wracking thing for everybody else has to be Tyler Gonzalez. Last year, he made very few starts in the championship, but the two at Daytona resulted in a first and a second. Yeah, he knows where to be on the last lap. Watch that car. White car with the yellow roll hoop sitting in fifth at the moment as they come out of the Le Mans chicane for the penultimate time. He's got Celine Roland to work with here if he wants a push now. This is not where he wants it now, he wants it next lap round because we've seen cars come from that far back and take the victory. Fifth, sixth, seventh coming out of the Le Mans chicane could be top step of the box by the time you get to the line. And now they're all line of stern. Now they're all being patient. I, I wasn't getting out of line as the no. white flag flies. Three and a half miles to determine the winner of the first round of the Whelan IMSA Mazda MX-5 Cup for 2024. And it's been a banner performance by Western Workman for BSI Racing. The scholarship recipient from the shootout last year has competed and he's led the last two or three laps under extreme pressure. But is he in the right place now? What has he got left? He won't want to drop back now, but he'll be trying to work out. Well, he's trying to make a break for it, is what he's trying to do. He's got Jared Thomas, last year's champion, also the champion from the year before. 
keep an eye on Gresham Wagner. He is being very wide. Yeah, he's there. Also, uh, Konosilic rather in the red white. That little sideways movement from Workman. Jared got helped a little bit by Jared Thomas there. Two-time defending series champion doesn't Best get that title. Look at that though, round the outside. Julian DaCosta. I told you, he, there's another rookie. And a pretty straight car as well. Nothing to flap around and slow him down. Now the bottom side looks to be a little bit quicker here as Wagner and Thomas are bump drafting the leader here. It's Connor Zilic, Celine Rolan, and who else is on Aaron the top Johnson side? Aaron Johnson. And Weston Workman. On it's two wide and four deep in two rows here at least. Down into one of the final breaking areas. This is the last of the breaking areas. And Tyler Gonzalez takes the middle of the track. He's made a break for it now. Now he's got to just run for the line. Everyone else has got to work together. Tyler Gonzalez has got five or six cars there. That can be closed down if they work together. That's Jared Thomas could win this, but so could any of them. Here they come. On Gonzalez, they're going to go straight up to the high side. Who's going to stay down low? Jeremy Thomas. Uh, Jeremy Fletcher, excuse me, stays down low. Here they come. There's going to be three wide through into the run to the line. It's another blank and finish. And Gresham Wagner's got the win, pushed by Tyler Gonzalez. Wagner wins it. By Tyler Gonzalez is pushing. Jeremy Fletcher's going to go around as he lost control on the grass on the infield, but he'll be scored through. Wow. That was absolutely, ex absolutely ex outstanding stuff. <laughs> Fletcher is actually third, despite the, the speed. So a 1-3 for McCumby McAleer Racing in this race. Gonzalez for Sato, coming home in second. Aaron Johnson, the best of the finishers for JTR, and Connor Zillich rounding out the top five. But poor Julian DaCosta, he was leading when they came out of the Le Mans chicane and got swallowed up by the pack. That's what happens in this series. Comes, it is just so close. Comes out of the chicane, leading by three or four cars lengths, finishes 11. <laughs> oh my goodness. He'd made his bid for freedom a little bit too early. Had a quick car, Julian De Costa. He'll learn from that, uh, as will Western Workman, uh, who finishes up the best of the rookies. Top three, then McCubby McAleer Racing, Gresham Wagner gets the wheel and Mazda <laughs> MX-5 Series off to a good start. From Tyler Gonzalez and Saito Motorsport Group in second. Jeremy Fletcher was there or thereabouts. He gets third position. Gresham Wagner, I think, should say thank you to Tyler Gonzalez. He pushed him through the lead. Behind then, it was Aaron Johnson in fourth, Connor Zilic in fifth, Jared Thomas in sixth, Western Workman in seventh for BSI is the best of the rookies in what's going to be a great rookie of the year battle. Celine Roland eighth, Nathan Nicholson ninth is the second rookie, and he's ahead of Preston Pardus in tenth. Eleventh is Julian De Costa. That was the top group. Outstanding racing from start to finish. Gresham Wagner was out there giving the fans a little something to smile about, was. doing some donuts, and he now knows where to go because in the last six times that he has raced at Daytona, he has only been outside of the top five once and only off the podium twice. Getting a little bit of Michelin. <laughs> left rear Michelin's gone. It's off the rim, actually, after his burnouts. So he's going to have to be very careful here needs to get the team the team will be on the radio I was about to say that I thought there was a bit of tire rub and if there's tire rub it generally means the tires moving around so he got the best out of that one he'll not be carrying that one forward to the next round no I I don't think we're gonna see Gresham Wagner running the, that set of Michelin's again but maybe the team can pull the rubber off the rim and give it to him and say hey here you go buddy uh, that, that's well, a that's a coffee table in in uh, in, in the making. That Welcome one. to McCumbie McAleer Racing. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, Gresham Wagner was always going to be one of the favourites, but quite a lot of them were in that top 11. I've got to say, though, uh, that though shit, there's a few big names outside of that as well. So, the first round of the new for 2024 Whelan Mazda MX5 Cup has lived up to its build it, bidding and it's billing. Heather Hadley went for a couple of wild rides throughout the afternoon. 
but it came down to one big blanket finish. And Gresham Wagner takes the first at Daytona for Sheer Adam. I'm John Hindhoff. Join us for race two tomorrow.